Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union, the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Welcome. Access to Democracy returns, and we return with one of our favorite people. Uh, who's here in a different capacity today. <laughs> Patrick Klinger, who really represented the twins many times on this show as Vice President of Marketing. And uh, this is your first time as President of Patrick Klinger and Company. It's great to be here, Alan. A marketing organization that is new and burgeoning, and let's talk about it. Well, I, I had the good fortune of being with the twins for 14 seasons and heading up the marketing department. It was a great time for me. It was, um, it was a lot of fun to be part of that organization. It's really a, a class organization. And, of course, since uh, you left, they have really gone <laughs> deeper into the toilet. But uh, we Yeah, they're not off that. to a great start so far this season. <laughs> but uh, it, it was really a, a wonderful organization, and um, I was blessed to be able to be there for, for a decade and a half and work with some terrific people. But uh, and you brought, you brought home to the Twins eight Emmy Awards for your marketing and advertising well, ventures. A lot of the credit belongs to my staff and, and the advertising agency that I worked with as well. And um, collaboratively, we did some really pretty special things, things that I'm proud of. Um, proud of being able to have helped open up Target Field and, um, and uh, enjoy some success throughout the 2000s. But new chapter in my life and it was it was time for me to move on and um, try some new things and I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur so I started a, a company uh, a couple of months ago that's really designed to help companies who are involved in sports get the most out of their their partnerships with sports teams and you've also deviated somewhat uh, in that regard by pushing a book I am helping a, a special gentleman push a book. Uh, a good friend of mine named Alan Miller wrote a book called My Name Was Toby. And maybe we can do a close-up on the book right now as we're talking about it. And it's just come out in the last couple of weeks. And you have been doing yeoman work, uh, trying to get us some reviews and some attention and uh, possibly even some book signings. And if we could do a close-up on it, that would be much appreciated, guys. There we are. Thank you, David. <clears throat> That's the book. Well, it's, it's really something I feel passionately about because I knew Toby. Uh, you and I have been friends for many years now, and uh, I've had the good fortune of, of uh, coming over to your house on numerous occasions for dinner, and, and Toby was always there, your constant companion, a, a beautiful, loving dog. And, uh, so I know his story. I knew his story, and, and you've uh, uh, put together a really special book. So the opportunity to work on it, uh, to help introduce it to other people uh, so that they know Toby's story is really very special to me. So I'm grateful for that opportunity. And we do have a website now also, uh, www.mynamewastoby.com, and uh, anybody interested can get a book that will make them laugh, will make them cry, but will really warm their insides. Absolutely. It, it, anybody who has ever owned a dog, uh, I think, will have uh, a connection with this book. And then, then you know, I, I've had maybe a dozen dogs over my life, and, and beautiful companions, great friends, and um, 
you know, some of the some of the best friends I've ever had, really. And uh, I we think don't own dogs, by the way. They own us. Well, I think you're right about really, that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a it's a wonderful book, and I, I know people will really enjoy it. So I hope that they visit the website, get a copy or two, and uh, really learn Toby's story. And you're doing just a wonderful job. I mean, that's an entirely new venture for you also. You have never marketed a book before other than maybe the t twins books, which you were responsible for publishing. But uh, those didn't go out, really, other than in twin shops and things like that. So this is a whole new area for you. It is a new realm, <laughs> but it's exciting. And you know, when you feel passionate about the product that you're pushing, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. You know, I, I could never market something that I didn't feel strongly about, that I, I didn't believe in. Uh, this is something I believe in. It is a great book, and it's a, it truly is a, it's a wonderful story. And so when I'm talking to potential reviewers or media people or, or buyers of the book, um, I, I, I'm very proud when I tell them that I'm, I'm representing. My name was Toby and Alan Miller. Patrick is one of the most laid-back people uh, you will ever meet. Uh, I think probably if he had his choice in life, and he, he's also one of the most ethical and kindest people that you will ever meet. I, I think that's the thing that really uh, started and stoked the friendship between us. He is everything that I am not. <laughs> uh, he's not a curmudgeon. <clears throat> he's not nasty. Uh, he doesn't pick on people. He has a lot of friends. Uh, I get hate mail all the time. Uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, uh, he's a very unique individual, and that's why he had such great success with the twins. Now, since the twins and you have parted company, I mean, they have fallen really into real disaster territory. I will say, I don't think the marketing is as good this year. That's just my own observation. I also think that in the off-season, <clears throat> when other teams uh, like Sh Cleveland and Chicago and Detroit went shopping at Nordstrom's, uh, the Twins went to the dollar store. And I think that's coming home to roost, uh, sadly. Uh, maybe their minor league players are two years away and maybe there's something down the road but it, it certainly is tough going right now throughout uh, well really beginning in about 2001 uh, the team began to have a lot of success uh, we won six division titles in 10 years um, uh, we had players like Justin Morneau and Joe Maurer come to the forefront really become uh, some of the, the, the finest players in Major League Baseball. Um, it was a special time. And sports is cyclical. Uh, there are very few teams that have the ability to stay on top forever. Maybe the New York Yankees, but even they haven't won a World Series in some time. Um, I think the Twins are in that little bit of a down cycle right now. Uh, I have all the faith in the world in Terry Ryan. He's, he is a uh, fantastic general manager, class act. He knows what he's doing. He's well respected in the league. He's going to get the the team on the right track. And uh, I know that the minor leagues uh, is filled with talent. Um, they might be a couple of years away, but I think people will uh, be excited about the Twins. They'll see on the field. If not this year, they, obviously they're off to a tough start. But I think in in 2014 or 2015, um, the Twins are going to be right there. It's interesting. You still have that Twins passion. <clears throat> even though you have gone on. And I have to say, in going on and starting PK and company, uh, you have done in a few short months uh, an amazing amount of business, uh, I guess because of the many friends that you really contributed to over the years and, and got to know. And your name, of course, is out there. The fact that you were so successful with the Twins, not only in helping to bring in Target Field, but in winning so many awards that you have a lot of friends in, in a lot of industries. And I think that's starting to come home now with PK and company. And I know that uh, you're, you're very close to an announcement with Buffalo Hot Wings. Uh, 
to represent them. Tell us some of the other people that uh, in a very short time it looks like PK and company will be representing. Well, first of all, um, when I was with the twins, one of the things that I, I realized, Alan, was that there were companies who were investing a lot of money in sports uh, and using sports as a marketing platform. But they really didn't always know exactly what they were doing. They, they had a tough time navigating the process or they were perhaps they were buying the wrong sponsorship or once they bought a sponsorship they really didn't know what to do with it. They didn't understand how to take what they had just purchased and actually drive business. Um, and that's what my company is really all about. It's, it's working with those companies that have decided that they want to be involved in sports or entertainment in some capacity and, and I want to help them get the most out of that investment. So I've been working with companies like the Star Tribune, um, KLN Family Brands, a wonderful company that's based in Purim, Minnesota, makes licorice and, and potato chips and uh, snack foods, dog food. Um, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is a project that uh, uh, I've been working on for a couple of months and I'm very excited about the, the possibilities there. Um, I, I'm also involved in a couple of nonprofit organizations and helping them get started. Um, one is Caring Souls, and I, I know you had Scott O'Malley, the founder of Caring Souls, on your show just recently. And really a very, very amazing story about how he and his family have really, really started to build this organization to take care of people in need, asking nothing uh, in return. And uh, you, you talk about someone who uh, really has passion for doing good. Uh, he was an amazing interview and is just a very unique individual. And one of the <clears throat> benefits of having my own firm now is that I have the opportunity to work with companies that I feel strongly about, uh, ethical companies, uh, companies that are, are doing good in the community. And, and Scott O'Malley and what he's developed with Caring Souls uh, is an example of that. Um, KLN Family Brands uh, is this company that has a tremendous commitment to its employees, to the state of Minnesota, uh, to, to the environment. Uh, they churn out fantastic products. Those are the kind of companies that, that I like to, to work with. And uh, I've had the good fortune um, so far, just in, in the infancy of Patrick Klinger and Company, to be able to, to work with a few of those companies. And uh, I'm excited about the future. So how did you get your start in marketing? Let's take us back to college and go from there. You know, it was really by accident. Um, I had majored in broadcasting while I was in college at Winona State. And I thought I wanted to run a radio station or, or television station. At one time, I wanted to be behind the microphone, but I, I came to realize pretty quickly I was going to have a long and illustrious career in Grundy Center, Iowa, probably, if I, if I stayed in... in uh, behind the microphone so you know I thought that also in college <laughs> and then uh, back at Syracuse on radio station WAER which is still in existence notwithstanding my short tenure there uh, they played back some of the interviews and some of the uh, newscasts that I did and I immediately went into English creative <laughs> writing it's, uh, <clears throat> and so I, I quickly realized that I was really not cut out for that but I loved broadcasting. Uh, I was hoping to run a radio or television station. I was also a huge sports fan. But uh, when I was in college, I interned at WCCO Radio. Uh, and that was really the, the golden era of, of WCCO. Uh, and it was in the marketing department. I never had a marketing class in college. Um, but that's where the internship was available. Uh, so I, I found via that internship that I like marketing. I was relatively good at it. Um, the following year, the twins invited me to intern in their marketing department. And that's really where my, my career path began to veer away from broadcasting into marketing. Um, from there, I, I went on to the Minnesota State Fair, where I was the director of special events. Um, and then from there, seven years as the head of marketing at Ticketmaster in the Midwest. Um, a stint at uh, the, the River Center, St. Paul Civic Center, before returning to the Twins. And then 14 years with the Twins. 
14, 14 great seasons with the Twins. Uh, all of that, and you're still 29 years of age. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. This is, uh, but uh, now you mentioned Winona State. Winona State is not unknown to your family, uh, and let's talk about that. Well, I'm very proud that uh, my oldest son, Zach, graduated from Winona State about two weeks ago. And my youngest son, Alex, who just graduated from Normandale Community College, will be attending Winona State in the fall. Um, a funny story, neither of them really wanted to go to Winona. And both had said, he said, Dad, that's where you went to school. That's where Mom went to school. We're going to go someplace else. I said, that's fine. I understand. Um, and they both ended up at Winona State of their own accord. And uh, my, my oldest son uh, really had a marvelous experience there. It's a beautiful town. It's a wonderful school. And um, uh, he, he enjoyed his, his four years in Winona very much. And he stepped out of college and right into the Star Tribune. He did. He did. He, uh, <coughs> he had an internship at the Star Tribune last year in the marketing department. Uh, he enjoyed it very much. They enjoyed him. They created a position for him. So as soon as he came out of school, he went right to work. And um, uh, so somehow, some way, he followed in his father's footsteps and found a love for marketing. And so he's now assisting the, the Star Tribune. And Alex, wh where is his direction headed? Well, Alex is uh, uh, very passionate about Japanese and the Japanese culture. And uh, that's what he's studying right now. He, he hopes to spend a year in Winona and then spend uh, a year or so in Japan, and ultimately becoming an English teacher uh, living in Japan. Uh, so that's his goal. And I have a very good friend who's a film director in Hollywood who is Japanese. And uh, he's done a lot of work in both Japanese American films and frequently uh, is in Japan for Japanese films. Uh, that'd be a great person for uh, Alex to get to know. And he, he's a wonderful guy. Uh, and uh, matter of fact, we tried to get him here this year to do a seminar for the students at MCTC, but it just didn't work out mm -hmm. because he was shooting a film in Japan at the time and we couldn't get him here. But uh, Well, both my sons have spent some time in Japan and we had a Japanese exchange student for a year that lived with us. and, and um, so they've, they've fallen in love with that culture and uh, so I'm excited for my son Alex and, and uh, I, I, I know whatever he puts his mind to he can do and I fully expect that in a few years he'll be teaching English in Japan. Really interesting and uh, how the tentacles spread out although Zach didn't fall far from <laughs> home. It's, uh, right here in the Star Tribune. Exactly. And um, who knows, he may end up with the twins. <laughs> but uh, now, things that you are really interested in uh, other than marketing. I know that you are a passionate golfer and uh, you have a handicap of about four. <laughs> well, maybe not. I, I wish, um, probably two or three times that. but. I've played golf uh, since I was probably 12. I love the game. Uh, it's one of those uh, hobbies that gets me outside. Um, it's an opportunity to spend four or five hours with great friends. Um, I, I wish I were better at it. As much golf as I've played in my life, I should be better at it than I am. But it's, it's something that I, I, I've always enjoyed, very passionate about it. Um, I, I love the outdoors as well. I'm from Winona, born and raised. It's a river town. Um, I grew up uh, out in the country, so I was always in the woods or on the water. Um, and opportunities to, to do that today are still some things that I really very much enjoy. And don't you find that golfing is a great way to generate business? It really is because it's an opportunity for you to get to know somebody um, you know, for four or five hours. You're, you might be sitting in a, in a cart with them or walking down the fairway with them, or in my case, walking to the woods to find my ball. Um, but it's a, it's a way to have uh, a conversation um, 
and I think you learn a lot about people on the golf course as well. If if they for instance, if, if they you cheat. golfed with me, you would learn <laughs> words that you didn't even know existed. Uh, you you may short, be right about that, but I my trust short me. adventure on yeah. the golf course. Uh, but it's really an opportunity to find out how, how somebody handles uh, competition, uh, whether they, you know, if they have a, a lie they don't like, if, uh, if they're using a foot wedge to kind of adjust the ball a little bit, or if they shave some strokes off uh, on the scorecard, things like that, that um, I, I think it can be a real indicator as to what kind of person you are and um, whether you're honest or or perhaps and you, you get to know that pretty readily on the golf course as you're yeah, you, you, with somebody. Yeah, and uh, I've seen people change on the golf course. I've seen people who are laid back and uh, seem to have a calm demeanor and get on the golf course and start throwing clubs and using profanity and, and uh, you know, maybe not being completely honest. Which I've never heard you do, by the way. In the dozen plus years that I know you, I have never heard you utter a profane word. Now, I make up for that. <laughs> Just ask any of my students who are behind the cameras here or in the control room. But uh, one of my weaknesses that I will live with. Well, you know, it, it, it's funny because I grew up around profanity. My father wasn't shy about using it. My grandfather, my uncles. Um, but my father, he, he's a wonderful man, it was sort of the do as I say, don't as I do, not as I do. And we didn't dare swear around him despite the fact that he was swearing around us all the time. And it's just a habit that um, I fell into. It's, it's, it's stuck. A, it's stuck. <clears throat> I mean, there are moments, I, I think we all have our moments of weakness, um, but uh, I, I really try to stay away from it. And you do. You certainly have in, in all the years that I know you. Now, I also know that uh, probably if you didn't have to earn a living, uh, you would like to have your feet up in a rocking chair on a porch in St. Thomas with a cigar in your mouth. So tell us about that. Well, it's actually St. John, but St. John, I'm sorry. St. John, uh, yes. Well, my, my mother and my stepfather own a beautiful place in St. John in the Virgin Islands, and they fell in love with it, uh, th that island about 10 years ago. Um, so they built a, a villa that I receive all the benefits from them having, but none of the obligations. So I have an opportunity to get down a couple of times a year and, and live the island life. And you're absolutely right. If I didn't have to earn a living, that's exactly where I would be. Uh, sitting on the veranda in St. Saint, Saint John and looking out over the Caribbean and, and enjoying a few Virgin Island pale ales. Uh, it's a really special part and of the world. And some Cuban cigars that you can't get in this country exactly. unless you smuggle them in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it, it, the, that particular island is really special to my family and, and uh, to me. And, uh, any chance that I have to get down and, and enjoy the Caribbean. Uh, in St. John, I, I try to do that. So what other ventures do you have in the offing? Uh, what are you looking at in well, terms of PK and company? You know, it's, that's also one of the really exciting things about having my own firm is that I don't have to lock in on one particular thing. I, I, I've identified a niche that I'm, I'm going after, um, yet at the same time as opportunities present themselves, I can really decide if I'd like to go down that path. And so I'm looking at a variety of different things from, from concerts that I like to put on. Um, I've been in the, in the concert entertainment business. Um, well, you did that career. with the twins also. I did, did some of that with yeah. the twins and certainly at Ticketmaster and, and uh, at the St. Paul Civic Center and River Center. Uh, I was deeply involved in, in concerts and, and promotion. So that's something that I'm looking at. Um, a variety of different business enterprises. So uh, that's one of the really fun, exciting parts about this is that there's nothing to hold me back from it. When you're with a company, uh, you really, that's your focus. That's, uh, your job is to, to market that firm and 
uh, generate revenue as best you can. When it's your own company, you can really try a lot of different things. And, and, and holding a corporate meeting is much less imposing when it's your own company and you just have your own few employees as opposed to being one of the sitting around a table of 12 or 15 people listening to some people bloviate <laughs> and other people actually contributing. Absolutely. And I, th I would, <clears throat> what has happened to me, I, I wouldn't encourage for everyone, but for me it was exactly the right thing to, to be able to step away for a little while. Uh, I've been working really from the moment I, I got out of college. I've been fortunate that way and I've had some high profile positions and um, been able to work with some fantastic people, but I think that there is a time that comes when you want to step away and sort of clear your mind a little bit and, and really think about what direction you want to go with the rest of your life. And, and I'm closing in on 50 now, and um, it was really... I have suits older than you. <laughs> Not this one. No, It's no, very dapper. <laughs> Thank uh, you. But it was a good time for me to sort of, um, I, I think, reconnect with myself a little bit and, and um, think about what I want to do from this point forward. I also know that in this new life of yours, people don't understand that the Twins is a 12-month-a-year operation. And not only a 12-month-a-year operation, but the days are sometimes just unbelievably long, uh, where you start at 8 in the morning and you're going to 11 at night. and you really have more time to connect with family in the life that you're designing for yourself now. When I was with the Twins, Alan, virtually every day uh, I would give an informational interview to someone, uh, oftentimes young people, and inevitably they would come in and the first thing they would say is, I'm a huge fan of the Twins, I'm a huge fan of baseball. And I would tell them that if you're really a huge fan, don't get into the game because it is a business. After a while, you see it for the business that it is. Um, and you might call it Moneyball. Absolutely. Uh, and there, to stay a fan, a, a true fan, I, I think you need that little bit of a distance. Uh, baseball is demanding. Uh, it is 14-hour days, weekends, holidays. 12 months out of the year. Um, you know, there is an off-season, but not for the front office. Uh, we, in fact, we worked probably, we worked harder during the off-season than we did during the season itself. Um, and it's all-consuming. So being able, after 14 years, to step out of that for a while and, and clear my mind and, and um, reconnect was, uh, well, I found it so far to be a, really a, a pretty beneficial thing. Patrick Klinger, a unique individual, PK and company. Uh, they're in St. Paul. We've put up the credits. Uh, you certainly, if you want marketing, you can get him. And if you're interested in a great book on dogs, my name was Toby, and maybe we can bring it up as the credits go out. And Patrick, thank you so much for coming in, and the best of luck. Thank you so much, Alan. What a so, pleasure.